I have come, Hephaestion says, to hate war. Returning to our precept, our storytelling precept, that uh, if a story has a theme, every character, including the subsidiary characters, must represent, in addition to themselves, an aspect of that theme. So this is from Virtues of War, and I want to read from the character of Hephaestion, Alexander's dear friend, his fellow general, his second in command, who represents that aspect of the warrior archetype that is capable of feeling compassion for the enemy and empathy for them and feels for those peoples who have been overrun and killed. So here is Hephaestion talking to Alexander. What we do is a crime, Alexander. In the end, it is but butchery. For all the poet's anthems, war's object is nothing nobler than the imposition of one nation's will upon another by means of force or the threat of force. The soldier's job is to kill men. We may call them enemy, but they are men like us. They love their wives and children no less than we. They are no less brave or virtuous, nor do they serve their country with any less devotion. As for the men and others I have killed or who have been slain at my command, I would bring them all back to life. Yes, if I could, I would reanimate every one of them, no matter what the cost to me or to the expedition. Now, let me remark here that this Hephaestion is my fictional Hephaestion. I really don't know what the real Hephaestion thought, but this is mine expressing one aspect of the warrior archetype, the aspect of the, over the theme of conquest, that conquest violates some kind of ethical code and takes the warrior archetype too far, takes it into darkness. Here he is, Hephaestion continuing. Till Persepolis, meaning the sacking of the enemy's capital. I stood with you, Alexander. Wrongs done to Greece must be avenged. But we have slain Persia's king. We have burned her capital. We have made ourselves masters over all her land. What now? Hephaestion gestures east across this river of India. Shall we conquer these honest yeomen next? Why? How have they harmed us? By what right do we bring war against them? Pursuit of glory? This army stopped being glorious a long time ago. Or shall we cite Achilles and claim that we emulate the virtues of war? Rubbish. Any virtue carried to its extreme becomes a vice. Conquest? No man may rule another. The most devoted subject will trade in an instant his wealth earned beneath your rule for poverty he can call his own. We had a cause once, Alexander. We have none now. Now, we noted in an earlier episode when Alexander was confronting the Indian king Porus that it was a clash between archetypes, the conqueror, the warrior conqueror archetype, and the king archetype. In this case, with Alexander and Hephaestion, we have the same archetype, both warrior archetypes, but one, the compassionate side, and the other, the straight-ahead conqueror. Now, it must be said in Alexander's, to his credit, that toward the latter half of his conquest, he made an incredible effort to become someone who did have compassion and someone who could reach out to the other side, particularly to the conquered peoples. In fact, in many ways, it was kind of his undoing. He brought the um, members of the Persian aristocracy and the warriors that he had brought into his army. He made them king's companions. He dined with them. He, he gave them so much honor and so much attention that he actually lost the goodwill of his own fellow Macedonians who felt that Alexander was going too far. But Alexander, unlike my fictional Hephaestion, never came to hate war. He always had a, a love for conquest and a lust for glory. So that he, he was, in my opinion, somebody who never truly moved beyond the warrior archetype, which is what we're talking about now in this series, and which will bring us in our next episode to a book I really love. I want to talk about King, Warrior, Magician, Lover by Thomas More and Douglas Gillette. We'll get into that and the deeper aspects of the warrior archetype in the next episode. Thank you.